Francis Bacon, considered brilliant, dynamic, controversial, and one of the greatest painters of the 20th century. The new exhibition on his lifetime work here at the Royal Academy of Arts is called Man and Beast. This exhibition is called Man and Beast because it is the first exhibition to focus purely on Bacon's fascination with animal imagery. Um, it was conceived by Michael Pepiat, our co-curator, who is an arts historian and writer, a really close friend of Bacon from the 1960s onwards and became his trusted biographer. And it was his suggestion that we focus on this particular area of, of Bacon's practice as something that had been really overlooked both during his lifetime and after his death. That, you know, this idea of man versus beast, but also man being beast, is something that was really prevalent in Bacon's mind and that he felt that, um, that man was nothing but an animal. There were no differences or, or anything to distinguish us from, from our kind of primate cousins and, and counterparts. Francis Bacon, um, for me, is one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. He was someone who was able to capture in paint the very essence of what it is to be a human being. So to see all these amazing paintings here in London for the first time in a decade is pretty extraordinary. The amazing thing about the timing of this exhibition is the fact that it brings together Bacon's pictures at the end of this pandemic, or what we hope will be the end of this pandemic. It's man and beast, and it's a, an ever-present uh, reminder of our connection with the natural world. Um, for me, these paintings have this special resonance, and I hope that lots of people of the next generation who wouldn't have had the chance to see the exhibition 10 years ago will come back and be confronted with these very, very visceral images um, of our relationship with nature. Bacon was born in 1909 to um, English parents in Ireland and was brought up in rural County Kildare for much of his childhood, surrounded by animals, but in a very observational and detached way and then that kind of continued in his later life where you know he became obsessed with collecting photographic materials and particularly animal imagery he had so many books um, focusing on on big game in equatorial africa and you know monkeys and chimpanzees and he would also use um mybridges edward mybridges images of human and animal locomotion to focus on the idea of movement in his paintings. Edward Mybridge uh, was a 19th century photographer who focused his, his practice on looking at sequential photographs where he would take um, scenes and sequences of images that looked at both human and animal um, motion. And the thing that completely fascinated Bacon about that was that he would he would focus his attention on the same sorts of movements, so a dog walking, a, a man walking, a child walking, and would compare those and use those, those frames and fragments to blur and create distortions of movement in his own paintings. And I think that that um, interest that he shared with Mybridge is fundamental to his approach to the animal form, but also the human form. As head of postmodern contemporary art in Europe at Christie's, it's been the privilege of my career to work with some amazing paintings by Bacon. In 2013, uh, I worked on the sale of three studies of Lucian Freud by Francis Bacon. Of course, Freud was a great friend and also a rival of Bacon's. And we sold that picture for $142 million back in 2013. It's still the world record today. This exhibition spans Bacon's entire career from one of his earliest works in the 1930s, Crucifixion, right the way through to the final painting that he produced before his death, um, Study for a Bull, 1991, which was only discovered in 2016. Um, and we're incredibly thrilled to have been able to bring together all of Bacon's works devoted to the subject of the bull and the bullfight. We have brought together his three studies of the bullfight in our central room of the exhibition, um, which is the first time that they have ever been seen together since Bacon produced the works and they were dispersed to their owners. And that final room really echoes the fact that he is returning in his final moments. Um, he's returning to that theme of the ultimate animality and an animal power of the bull and the bullfight. 
As you walk around this exhibition, you are constantly confronted by some of the most impactful, powerful images. They leave tingles up your spine. And that's why Bacon will always be considered one of the greatest artists of the 20th century.